In the example of the nail being pulled out of the crowbar, we will first do our list. So we have four supplied. Our 50 newtons. We have the distance of the lever arm of the applied force, which is 22 centimeters. So I will go ahead and make that to meters so that we have all SI units. Now, the nail force applied to the nail, I'll do N for nail, is unknown, but we know the distance of the nail from the pivot point is two centimeters. Again, I will put that into SI units so I do not forget. The advantage to using the things something like a crowbar is because you need a minimum torque to move the nail. Well, we get a machine advantage because the torque is the torque. But remember, torque is the product of force, lever arm, and the distance, and the sign of the angle between them. That's torque in general. Now, because the torque is the product of force and distance, what the mechanical advantage becomes is we to produce a minimum torque if we increase the distance we decrease the force necessary to apply to get to torque and that's one of the machine advantages so in this example we're going to have torque of the force applied to the nail and then the force on the nail itself so it's going to look like this And when we do our force diagrams, the angles will be 90 degrees, which makes the signs of the 90 degrees one. So we get maximum torque in this particular example. So now let's solve for what we're interested in, which is force applied to the nail. So we divide through by distance of lever arm. So we get force of the nail equals force applied times lever arm of the applied force divided by the lever arm of the nail. Okay, and then everything's in SI units, so now we can just enter numbers, put in our numbers, and then solve. Now, one of the, as a reminder, I strongly suggest you put in the units so that when you run the math, you see you get the unit you expect out. Meters divide out, we get newtons, and that's exactly what we're expecting. So, when we use our calculator, what we will end up with is the force on the nail will be 1,650 newtons of force. And then that is what is required to remove the nail from the board. Let's do the merry-go-round problem. What we have is a merry-go-round with a mass of mass that's known. We have center, we have a radius. We also know there's going to be a force applied to get it to rotate, which is producing an angular velocity this way. Okay, so this is our free body diagram and our variable list. We have a, I'll put big D for diameter of three meters, but for our purposes, we need radius. So we do half of that. So we know the radius. We know the mass of the merry-go-round is 150 kilograms, so it's pretty heavy. Force applied is 750 newtons. 
and the angular angular acceleration is what we need to know. In this particular example, the rotation axis is inside the object, which means we have to go to our table of moments of inertia. So the things we will need before we get to torque is when we need the moment of inertia of a solid disk, which is one half mass radius squared. All right, so now we know what that is. Now we go to our torque equation. So our torque equation is force times lever arm sine of the angle between those, which equals moment of inertia, or mass term, times our acceleration term. And what we're wanting to solve for is acceleration. So let's go ahead and solve for acceleration. So angular acceleration equals force times lever arm times sine of the angle between them divided by the moment of inertia of the rotating object, which is the merry-go-round, which we know from above, so we can sub in. So I'm going to go ahead and sub in and simplify. So we get 2 times 4 times lever arm sine of the angle between them divided by mass of the merry-go-round radius squared of the merry-go-round. And one of the things to note is that on something circular, the force applied to something circular, whether it's you pushing it or a rope, is always going to be 90 degrees, which means the sine of 90 will be 1. So for these problems, it simplifies kind of nice. So our angular acceleration, now we can just plug in all the numbers. The force applied is 750 newtons. Now we can also further simplify by getting rid of, because the distance that the force is applied is the same as the radius of the um, merry-go-round, which means we can simplify even farther, which means we do not need this term here. Let me divide by mass of the merry-go-round, which is 150 kilograms. Times radius, which is 1.5 meters. Now notice what the units turn into. Remember, newtons are kilograms, meters per second squared. Kilograms divide away, meters divide away, so we get per second squared, which is which is angular acceleration of radians per second squared. And our answer will be six point six seven radians. Per second squared 